Hi guys, it's another beautiful autumn day. I'm on my way down to London because this week the Beckenham Junior Choir are doing a first performance of my new Lion Opera. And I'm going for a rehearsal today and then the performance is on Saturday. So you're coming along with us. I don't know about you guys, but we've had some really stunning autumn weather here. I cut across this playing field, so it's quicker to get to the station that way. It's just stunning. Right, we're on our way. So you may remember the children's opera from last year, the first of the Lion Operas. That was commissioned and performed by Beckenham Junior Choir. The second Lion Opera has been done by a number of schools, but the first of the performance is going to be done by the Beckenham Junior Choir again, and that's this Saturday. The piece is about the lion and the donkey again. Lighting is better over here, isn't it? In the first opera, a baby lion arrives at St. Jerome's Monastery and has an injured paw. St. Jerome looks after the lion and takes him in. And then the lion grows into a big adult lion, and then the donkey goes missing and everyone in the monastery blames the donkey. In the second opera, we go back in time to see what happened in the gap when the lion was growing up in the monastery. And in this episode, the lion is becoming more and more naughty and gets into trouble, and then goes off on an adventure when he has an argument with St. Jerome and discovers an important secret which is uh, relevant to the monastery. I'm not going to give the game away, um, but we'll see. I'm really pleased how it's going so far. I've been to one rehearsal. You may remember that I said before how I like being in charge of the total artwork, and that is amazing. And I can leave the link to the video up there. Um, I can never remember now which side is on. I got so mixed up by this. But this time I'm taking a bit more of a back seat. I think also as a composer sometimes you do need to let go. You do need to take a back seat sometimes. The fact was I just didn't have the time to do that for this time round with the Beckham Junior Choir. But it's great to be working with them. They're a lovely choir. And it's a lovely day to be on the way to London. I mean, in terms of how you guys might get performances and that sort of thing, I think being involved in performances is good. Like, at an early stage, I think more involvement the better. If you can perform yourself, then great. If you can organise ensembles, if you can conduct yourself and learn to conduct, um, then even better. You know, the more you can do to make stuff happen, the better. One of the things I keep finding, and this is a bit of a preoccupation of mine at the moment, so it's worth chatting about maybe, is that i said before, as a composer, I think you need to take charge, you need to push for things, you need to set things up, you need to see yourself a bit like a writer in the screenwriting concept, where the screenwriter comes up with a concept often for a film or for a TV show or whatever. It does amaze me on various things that I work, how little people push for stuff, and I find myself more and more being, and I don't think I'm being too pushy here, I find myself more and more uh, that I need to drive stuff, and if I don't drive stuff, then things won't happen. And it's not necessarily that people are hostile to what I'm doing. Um, sometimes it can be just the case that they've got, you know, lots of other stuff on, and uh, every time you speak to them, they're like, yeah, 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 it'd be great to do this, and each time you speak to them, you get a little bit further. But if you don't speak to them, then weeks, months will go by and nothing will happen. So, yeah, just... Like, if you're at school, if you're at college, if you want to get your music performed, then just seriously talk to your friends, find people, anyone who plays an instrument. This is sort of what I did. Find a friend who plays a flute and write a piece for them. If there's a school concert, then just see if you can talk to your music teacher and persuade them to put this flute piece in the concert. That's the way forward. Right, we're at the rehearsal. Ready right, to rehearsal about to start.
Okay, rehearsal's over and I'm waiting for the train to go back into London and then up to Ely. Half past eight now. Um, good rehearsal. Not great. Uh, <laughs> it's difficult when you do music theatre with kids and in the church it's very cold. It's a big South London church. Um, it's November night. Uh, people are tired. It was a two hour rehearsal on a weekday with kids young as seven. Um, yeah, rehearsals are fun, but rehearsals are hard. Like, turning your ideas into performance, it's, it's so hard. And the more I think that you can just have your pieces rehearsed, see what rehearsals are like, see how things work, see what's easy, see what's hard, the more you can do, the more you can do, the better. I am continually surprised by what works and what doesn't in all sorts of contexts, but doing music theatre with kids particularly. Okay, this lighting works, doesn't it?